To access your complete results, you will first need to log into the site where you took the assessment. That's humanesources.com. I'm going to click the login button. And then you use your email and password that you assigned yourself when you first took the assessment. There is a forgot your password function, just in case you forgot to write it down. Okay, so I'm going to close the dialog box so I can show you where to access your report. You're going to click on My Portfolio. You scroll down. And there's the Do What You Are report right here. View Full Report. Click on that. And there's a couple of options. You can print the report. You can look at the PDF view. Or you can get a PDF download. Okay, so I will come back to this in a bit, but to show you some of the features of the report. So let's transition to a quick review of the history and the context of personality type. To understand the history of personality type theory, I pulled up this infographic about the origins of the Myers-Briggs type indicator. You might also know this as the MBTI, which is a popular tool to measure personality type and is really the assessment that started the whole movement. The true origins of personality type theory began with Carl Jung. He was a Swiss psychologist who was also well known for his work on understanding the collective unconscious uh, archetypes and personality char characteristics of extroversion and introversion, which we will be discussing in more detail later. It is likely you have learned about his work if you have taken an intro level psychology course. So Carl Jung uh, wrote an influential book in 1923 about personality type, which inspired the work of Catherine Cook Briggs, and she is the Briggs and the Myers Briggs type indicator to undertake a, a lifelong exploration of personality type. Catherine inspired her daughter, Isabel Briggs Myers, the Myers in the Myers Briggs type indicator, to also study personality type, and together they created the MBTI. This is a picture of the mother and daughter team. During the 20s and 30s, they worked together to create the basic structure of the MBTI. In 1943, the first version of it was copyrighted. One of the motivating factors of publishing it was to help people understand one another so that the devastating conflict and suffering and hostility experienced during World War II could be avoided in the future. So let's skip ahead. This is a picture of Isabel Myers Briggs in her adulthood. She died in 1980 and uh, her daughter and son-in-law carried on the work. So the MBTI really has been a family endeavor. It is through the work of these two that the assessment gained widespread popularity. They created training and certification programs to promote best practices and ethical use of the instrument. Millions of people have taken this assessment and it has been translated into multiple languages. It is also used worldwide in a wide variety of contexts such as in business and industry. Uh, they'll use it to build communication and team working skills in their employees. In fact, about 89 of the Fortune 100 companies use this with their employees. It is also a popular tool to use in couples therapy to strengthen communication and understanding. And finally, it is also used in most colleges and universities, especially in college career centers, 95% of whom offer a personality type type assessment to their students to enhance career planning by increasing self-knowledge. We use the Do What You Are at the University of Kansas because it is an online tool that is easy to navigate and understand. It uses the same type theory as the MBTI. So that's a brief history of the personality type theory and its applications. Let's move on to a brief review of personality type theory by examining the MBTI dichotomies, a foundational concept in understanding type theory. The MBTI dichotomies are a central framing theory behind personality type theory. You've probably been wondering what the four letters that are at the top of your report and what they mean. These letters indicate your natural preferences that you use every day when focusing your attention, taking in information, making decisions, and dealing with the outer world. In other words, it's your personality type. So the four MBTI dichotomies seen in this graphic are opposite pairs. You have a preference that has existed since birth for one side of these dichotomies. An easy way to think about this is by thinking about being left-handed or being right-handed. It is likely that you can use both hands to write your name, but you have naturally developed a preference for using one hand over another. So let's learn more about these dichotomies. Okay, so where you focus your attention. If you have a preference for 
extroversion, uh, you are energized by being with other people, have a tendency to think out loud, talk more than listen, are easy to read, to get to know, share personal information readily and freely. If you have a preference for introversion, the natural focus here is, is in the internal world, okay? So these are people who are energized by spending time alone, think through things through in their heads, listen more than they talk, are more private, uh, prefer to share information with a select few, okay? Let's think about how to take in information, that dichotomy. Uh, for those of you who have a preference for sensing, um, you have a tendency to take in information in a sequential, step-by-step -step way. Uh, trust what is concrete and certain, tend to be known as practical and realistic, can be specific and literal, give detailed descriptions, grasp facts and details, and often have an excellent memory for them, as a matter of fact. Intuition, taking in presenting uh, information in a snapshot or a big picture way. So these are people who trust inspiration and inference, um, uh, uh, like new ideas and concepts for their own sake, tend to be known as imaginative and insightful and like to learn new skills. Um, they often get bored easily after mastering skills. Okay, so that's that dichotomy. A third dichotomy, the way you make decisions based on that information that you got from this dichotomy. Um, thinking, these are people who have a, who like making decisions by stepping back from the situation, taking an, an objective viewpoint. So they apply impersonal analysis to problems. They naturally see flaws and tend to be critical, um, are often motivated by a desire for achievement and accomplishment. Uh, those who have a feeling preference make decisions by stepping inside the situation, taking an empathetic view. Uh, they consider the effect of actions on others. They um, naturally like to please others, show appreciation easily, and are often motivated by a desire to be appreciated. And then the final dichotomy, how you deal with the outer world. If you have a judging preference, um, planful approaches, deadline oriented, very scheduled, um, happiest after decisions are made, what matters to be decided and settled. In fact, often feel relieved after a decision has been made. Um, they often set goals and work toward achieving them on, on time. And then perceiving, I love this little graphic and how, it, how you arrive here. Um, these are people who have a tendency to be spontaneous, uh, to meeting the deadline, uh, often reach the deadline in a rush of activity, uh, often um, happiest leaving their options open, don't want to rush closure, will let interesting developments interfere with deadlines. Change goals as new information becomes available. Okay, so those are the four dichotomies, and I said before, these are the central defining viewpoint of personality type of your report. Okay, okay, let's focus in briefly on some myths associated with personality type. Learning about your personality type can be a powerful experience. However, it is important that you avoid some myths associated with personality type, which really are pitfalls that get in the way of an accurate understanding and how to use this information in your life. So the first example I'd like to share is uh, some types are better than others. I've heard people say this. You know, there are 16 different personality types. It can be a natural for you to think that your personality type is better, uh, especially at the beginning. And it is very empowering to acknowledge personality characteristics that you may not have validated before. However, as you develop your understanding about your type, you will come to appreciate the strengths of pers different personality types, especially since they have natural strengths different than your own. It is important to note here that the value of learning about personality type is not just learning about yourself, but also learning about the personality of others to achieve better communication, understanding, and collaboration in personal and professional relationships. So therefore, no type is better than the others. Okay, let's move on to another myth. Personality type describes everything about a person. You know, it was never... In the intent of the MBTI to describe you perfectly and wholly. In fact, no assessment like this exists and, and likely never will. Human beings are complex. Um, within each of the 16 types, there's still quite a range of differences in behavior. These differences can be explained by family influences, where you grew up, genetics, and other influencing factors. So therefore, you are more complex than your type. Okay. A third myth, uh, the final myth, blaming bad behaviors on personality types. Let me give you some examples. For example, stereotyping. Uh, someone might say, she's a thinking type. She won't consider other people in her decision. You know, 
a response to that could be, you know, perhaps this person with a thinking preference would be more receptive if the needs of the people in the situation were, were presented as part of an analysis of pros and cons. So everyone can think of people in a decision. It just it depends on how the pr information is presented. Okay, another example, uh, making excuses for poor performance. So someone might say, I'm an ISTJ, I can't brainstorm. You know, brainstorming may not be uh, a preferred activity of ISTJs, however, everyone can learn to brainstorm. Perhaps they can try brainstorming variations on a practical theme. Okay, another example, pushing tasks onto others. You know, someone might say, let the sensing types deal with the details. You know, there are details in many parts of a project. At times it will be necessary for intuitive types uh, to deal with the details specifically relating to their role in the project. So dealing with the details can help them ensure that their visions are workable. Okay, so therefore your type is not an excuse to behave badly. Uh, do avoid that pitfall. Okay, we're back to the complete profile. I've pulled up mine so that you can see what information you have access to. At the top here, you have options to print, uh, look at a PDF view, or do a PDF download. Here's the four letter type that is your personality type, and the bar graphs represent the strength of your answers toward answering the assessment. So clearly here I had a pretty good result in response to the extroverted scale, the intuitive scale, the thinking scale, and then I was kind of back and forth with the judging and perceiving scale, uh, which is not uncommon by the way. Most people will um, kind of be back and forth with at least one out of the four scales. So the introduction section is a good description of personality type. Um, the introduction, the understanding you section is something that you have already read, by the way, and that's what they presented to you at the end of you completing your assessment, and they asked you how accurate you were. So I, when I read through this, I said it was very accurate, okay? But it's a good idea to reread that again. And then as I scroll forward here, you see more of the complete profile. Strengths and blind spots, um, elements of college satisfaction, elements of career satisfaction, uh, learning style, interpersonal negotiating style, um, and then really interestingly there's information about career. Um, there are different sections, you, you were asked about you know various career tracks, for example education and training, how interested were you or were you not? Um, I answered I was very interested. Okay so this is where it gets really interesting is that in that education and training realm what they did is they teased out all those personality types, all those uh, the career tracks that ENTJ, my personality type, are attracted to. Um, there's lots of historical trend information and data uh, looking at how, what, where are the common areas for personality types to go into. You know, as a general rule of thumb, we don't eliminate uh, career tracks based on this kind of information, but this is good information to use to open up doors or confirm some choices, to intrigue you a little bit, and, uh, you know, just to kind of get you started and keep on moving. So the kind of information they present here, um, it's all hyperlinked and you can get more details information, you know, government and law, the arts, these are areas that I said I was either very interested or pretty interested in. Um, so I'm just going to find one here so I can show you an example. How about this? A management analyst. Okay, so I want to know more about what a management analyst involves. So it opens up a new window. Here's an overview, knowledge and skills, tasks and activity and better yet, wage information, and it's distributed among states um, and in uh, uh, percentiles, which is kind of inf in interesting information. You can also look for job listings. So let me just click on this. And these are different job listings uh, with management analyst uh, types of position descriptions in them. So these are real job openings. It's a great way to learn. Let's say I'm interested in that. I can save this to my profile and even rate that so when I go back in I can see uh, and get this access to this information again. So I'm going to rate it a 2. Let's say that's a good fit for me as a number 2. 
Okay, so we've result we reviewed in this video, um, you know, aspects of personality type theory, the history, the context, some myths associated with it. I've shown you how to access your results, even your complete profile. If at any time you feel like you want to know more, um, understand more about yourself, this is just a beginning. You are always welcome to schedule an appointment uh, with any of the University Career Center coaching staff. Um, that's what we're here to do. To do that, you can call the main number. It's 864-3624. Or you can go online and uh, make an appointment online for an in-person appointment, of course. So um, that's the end of this video.